MRN Crew Call on MRN.com is presented by Money Lion, the world's most powerful financial membership. Money Lion, here we roar. And also brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strengths. Chio Money Lion presents MRN Crew Call. I'm your host, Rocco Williams, and I'm here with the pit crew member with the coolest last name. I mean, Kyle Power. <laughs> I got the power. Sometimes. All the Sometimes. time. Well, most of the time. With a, with a last name like Kyle Power, yeah. I would, if my last name was Power, I'd walk up and down pit road, bowed up all the time. You try to have that little bit of swag to you, and you know, a little confidence. I, I think when I first met you, I might have said, hello, Mr. Power. You know, I might have. I might Maybe. have. <laughs> I don't know who calls me Mr. Power, but. I mean, when it's my sophomore year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, when, when I hear of a tire change named Kyle Power, I just automatically assume yeah. that they're great, that well, they're good. You know, try to be. <laughs> well, anyways. I like, I like to be a little humble. You know, you got you to gotta be a little, a little confident, you know, and a little humble at the same time. Well, I think you're great. So, and I think you. you're uh, in a, one of the top tired changes we have ever seen and i appreciate yeah. you being on the show today and we well, can talk well yeah it's great being here thanks for having me we're going to talk las vegas perfect and, you know we like to start off uh, the show with slaw cam as you yeah. know i was out there in las vegas and i got a lot of i was up and down pit road i got to speak to a lot of the athletes out there and the energy was just amazing it was a it was a pretty cool race you know i think everybody really likes going to vegas i mean the weather's usually always nice and there's always something to do at night you know hopefully you most guys do a really good job of staying out of trouble. So. <laughs> Most of them. Most of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's go take a look at Slaw Cam and right, let's yeah. dive into the cow power. Oh, jeez. <laughs> don't want to do that, but I got the power. Ah, first first West Coast trip, man. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. About to go in there, grab me a good seat. You're good looking seat. good. Save me a seat. Hey, hey here, put my bag. Hey, put this put this in the seat for me. Do you want a single? Crew. You don't even know the name. We are crew. <laughs> We are, like I was Not we, are we are crew. Not we are crew. We are crew. We are crew.com. No, it's on Instagram. Oh. Okay. <laughs> we are crew. <laughs> <laughs> We're here in I'm Vegas, man. Tell y'all right now what happened in Vegas. Stay in Vegas. You know what I'm saying? What happened on pit road? Stay on pit road. You know what I mean? Get but you on camera, though. You know what I mean? That's cool. Get with okay. it. Get lost. You okay, know okay, I mean? okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Get with it or read about it. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? Ricky Rose here. here. You know it. Beautiful day in Vegas. Let's go. Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Come on. Dustin Lineback, Carriers Matter, Carrier Lives, lives matter. matter, and the Beast Mode, that's what I named that position now, Beast carrier. Mode Tire Carrier. It is. When you do the two tire drop off? It is. That's the hardest job out there. Agreed. Facts. That's hashtag. I, I don't do it. Hashtag. Um, <laughs> facts. <laughs> this is your pre-race ritual. Rowdy Every week. Harrell. Right here. What's your position? Name and position. Beast Mode Tire Carrier. Yeah. <laughs> what car? ADA car, baby. All day. Nick All Covey, day. Jackman, 47 JTG. Woo! Beard game strong. That's it. Hey, we got to pose. Hey, can you pose for me on that suit? Let me see it. Let me see it. Ooh, let me see it. It's looking good. Looking good. Appreciate what you're doing for this young gentleman, Jabari, who acts so clueless sometimes. <laughs> It's just a shot. We got you, man. You know it. Appreciate hey, that's how we do, Rob. Even, even in Las Vegas, we got you. Yes. Yeah, appreciate it. We'll make your Speed highlight work. film, show your beast mode tire carrier <laughs> skills. We, we sure will. Ain't that right, Faye? Yeah. Right, well, right. first of all, is he good enough for a yeah. highlight film? Yeah. Okay. Well, he deserves a highlight film. I he, take your word for it. Get him right. He just, hey, closed mouths don't get fed. That's the lesson of the day. I like it. When you're out here, you got to network, meet people, shake hands. Right. Meet yep. and greet, we call it. Yep. Hey, Simke. Yes, sir. I'm glad I see you right here. You know, you're Jack Man in the number nine car. Hey, you wouldn't happen to have a big fat jack handle, would you? I got a nice little skinny one. Man, what's up with these big handles, man? I guess they think they're a little bit more sturdy, but I just like the feel of the, the all natural, nice and skinny. Well, you, you stay with the skinny handle. I just don't like change. This is your matchup right here. You got the JGR boys pitting the car against the number 18 and the number 51. He's going to get it.
And we're back. You yeah. you know any of those guys up there on pit road? I know a few of them. You know, seen them around. <laughs> yeah. You could feel that energy. They, they were yeah. they were ready. That last yeah. pit stop was at the truck race, yeah. but um, money yeah. stop or that was not the money not stop. The money that stop? was like uh, two. That yeah. was like two stops in. I mean, you know, they only man, did nowadays. Three. Really, every stop's a money stop. Man. I mean, track position being what it is. Anyways, man, you know, I've been all the hype going into Vegas was the installation of the new package you know yeah. the full package or whatever yeah. i mean just briefly we don't want to get too much into it a lot of people have talked about it. what yeah. is your what are your thoughts on that i think i like it i mean it definitely made the restarts interesting mm-hmm. i mean the, the, there was racing all over the racetrack it didn't matter i mean if it was for the lead for 10th for 15th there was always groups of cars racing each other i mean it, you could always pick a good race out on the track somewhere and, and, and you're right and you know typically when we go to vegas and this is my personal opinion i always felt that race was boring yeah. But only because for us, it gets strung out and, you know, yeah. it's just, it, it is what it is. You went to Vegas expecting that. Yeah. So it was uh, uh, it was cool to see that uh, the cars were racing close together. But I would have liked to see more pit stops. Yeah. And more cautions. We always like to see more pit stops. I would have. I mean, that's what we do. I mean, it's. I would. I would. I would. And um, we have a segment coming up where we'll dive into that on, on why I wanted to see more yeah. pit stops. But all in all, I thought it was a, a, a great a great experience, yeah. a great race, you know, and I'm looking forward to going back there in September. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Go there it's twice. Gonna, it's going to get even better. You know, the, the more the teams learn about the cars and, and, and how they have to work, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's just going to, the race is just going to get better and better throughout the year. Well, you can say that because this is, how many years has this been as a tire changer for you? This is a uh, year 19. 19 yeah, years, 19 man. Years. Yeah, <laughs> seen a lot of stuff going and a lot of change. Like, I don't even know where to begin with you, yeah. you know, and, and, and that's you're a tricky guest because I don't think one show is enough to yeah. cover, <laughs> you know. Maybe I'll write a book. You might. You don't have Maybe CTE like me. So, yeah. I mean, I can't remember anything from my 15 years, but yeah. you're 19. You've got to have something. I remember bits and pieces of, you know, a lot of you remember a lot of the good and you try to forget some of the bad stuff. But. I know. I get it's, it. it's all experience. You know? it's, you know. <laughs> well, anyways, I want to I want to get more into that in those yeah. nineteen years, and uh, we're, we're gonna. How we're, long is this show? This show, man, is nineteen minutes. Oh, all right. No, I'm joking. <laughs> make it quick. It's as long yeah. as we want it to be. All right, perfect for you. But yeah. we're we're gonna come right back. The MRN Crew Call presented by Money Lion. Next time those engines roar, don't just get pumped up. Get five percent cash back with Money Lion. Our members get 5% cash back on up to $2,000 in annual purchases of tickets to a NASCAR race from authorized ticket sellers. You'll also get 5% off any at-track purchases and all purchases on NASCAR.com. Just use your Moneyline debit card and it couldn't be easier. Join the world's most powerful financial membership, Moneyline. Here we roar. Experience different. Boyer sees the checkered flag. Experience excitement, drama, and action. And he wins the STP 500. Experience NASCAR at its best. Experience Martinsville. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series returns to Martinsville Speedway March 24th for the STP 500. Tickets start at just $47 and are on sale now. Call 877-RACE-TICKS or visit martinsvillespeedway.com today to start your experience. Veteran drivers and rookie drivers. NASCAR Today Midday keeps you up to date with all your favorites each weekday. It's a dream come true. A lot of you know the path that I've gone down. There's a lot of opportunity with, with the package changes, you know, with the Chevrolet and the work they're putting in. And I know one thing's for sure, it's good to have my name on the top of the cup car. Don't miss any of the breaking NASCAR news with NASCAR Today Midday. Only on the Motor Racing Network, the voice of NASCAR. And we're back to MRN Crew Call, brought to you by Money Line. I'm here with the Kyle Power, and I'll give my producer Daryl uh, two points for that song. You know, I was yeah, I was prepared to get into him. Let's you say know, that off your playlist on his music. It's not on my playlist, no. but that was a that was a pleasant surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, I want to talk more about it you. It should okay. be. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good job, Daryl. Yeah. 19 years experience. Yeah. What is your official title in the shop? Because you're not only you're a crew member, you work in the shop as well, yeah. right? Uh, my whole career I've worked in the shop. Uh, right now, my official title is like I just work in our uh, athletics department. Okay. And pretty much what I do is, you know, we got a group of guys that we take care of everything pit stop related for all of our guys, all the athletes. So what does that um, entail? 
if you uh, could be descriptive. It could be anything. I mean, <laughs> in the off season, we work on all the pit equipment, pit boxes. Mm-hmm. Uh, during the season, I mean, servicing the air guns, jacks, fuel heads. I mean, taking care of all of our helmets, every anything the guys need. Okay, so, and we're, we're it, there for them. And where are you from? I'm from New Hampshire originally, small little town called Lyme, New Hampshire. And has yeah. racing been in your your background, your family? Have you you grew up uh, in racing or what? I grew up around racing. Yeah, I had some uh, friends of the family that raced, and uh, you know, just got it in my blood. And <laughs> and it, it's all started. I was about fourteen or fifteen. Okay. You know, couldn't couldn't even drive, but I was at the racetrack. <laughs> so, and it's it just grown from there. You know. So how did you get in? How did you get into this? Like when? Explain to me. How Kyle Power, what was your first race team and how did that come about? Uh, well, the first, uh, I was actually working at a car dealership at the time. Okay. And uh, I was riding a motorcycle around one night and I saw it, drove by the shop and I was like, man, they got some race cars. In a Hibusa like, or a Harley? It was a Ninja, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those tire changes, y'all look crazy. Yeah, a little bit. You know, you got to be a little <laughs> crazy. I mean, we jump out in front of these maniacs. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I saw it and, you know, went and talked to them. I started volunteering with them and then uh, they said, hey, we're looking to put on a full time employee. Are you interested? I was like, sure. Took a huge pay cut, didn't have any benefits. Well, how old were you at this time? Oh, uh, geez, I was about 19. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so it was, you know, I was like, sure, I'll take the chance. Mm-hmm. Uh, I worked for them for about a year, and then they decided to shut down. Well, at that time, I'd met a lot of people in North Carolina, so I was like, this was up in New Hampshire. But, uh, I'd met a lot of people in North Carolina, and I was like, man, I really want to do this for a living. Mm-hmm. Packed up everything I owned, put it in the back of my truck, moved to North Carolina, and I was, uh, I had a hundred dollars left in my name when I got a job on, it was actually the 25 Bush car at the time, Team Renzi Motorsports. Mm. Yeah, I was, I was about a week from moving back home. Why does that yeah. story sound so familiar? Like yeah. so many guys, you yeah. know, when you, when you say that, I, I started initially thinking of three individuals who told me a story yeah. just like that. It's, Dylan Dow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Dylan, same way. Just way. like that. Yeah. Tire carrier. Um, yeah. From, from Kansas. Car. Yeah. Just pack up their stuff. Chad Knauss. Yeah. I mean, he all the guys. His story, I mean, you know, pack up. Hey, I'm living out of my car. I'm just trying to, oh, yeah. trying to get in. And when they get in, boy, you yeah, know. you get in. You you make the most of it. I mean, you work hard and you learn a lot. I mean, you don't want to go back to that mm-hmm. having a struggle like that. So it's like, you know, you gotta. You finally made it. You gotta put the effort in. It's it's a position that not anyone can do, you know. And um, yeah. I'm around a lot of new race fans, you know, or I yeah. try to. You know, get a um, convert a lot of stick and ball fans mm-hmm. to the race fans, being that that's what I do, that's what I love now. And the biggest thing that they have a problem understanding is how hard it is to do what the overall, the mechanics as well. That's totally oh, yeah. separate, yep. you know, and, and the crew chiefs and the drivers as well. That's yeah. but as it relates to pit crew guys, you know, they, it, there's a perception that anybody can do it. Would you agree? Yeah. There is mm-hmm. I mean, there until is. they or, pick or up they a gun, can, or you'd be like, you know. A lot of coaches believe, hey, we can train this guy to do this. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, some people just don't have that. It's it's weird, especially with changers. I mean, usually when you look at a pit crew standing online, you're like, you can kind of pick out who the changers are out mm-hmm. of the group. I mean, you know, the jack man and the carriers and the gas man are the big, huge guys. You know, changers are just a little smaller, you know, yeah, maybe a little more agile. Just, you know, some of us are just a little weird. You know, I mean, so, <laughs> well, be honest. You know. I've never met a sane tire changer. No, we're just you know. Yeah, yeah, y'all a little off. Y'all, yeah. you're a little off. You're a little I mean, crazy. You're a bit needy. Yeah. Divas, Some high them, maintenance. I was never like that. Really? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> just every now and then, maybe be like, oh yeah. man, my left shoe's too tight. Exactly. I don't know. It's just gonna be a bad day. You know, it's, it's gonna be. A bad day. But but hey, think back from your first and second year. How has the not only the attitude and the look on pit road changed, but overall just the uh, the look of pit crew and pit crew athletes how has that changed from year one oh. year two of yours to yeah. now oh it's been huge i mean <laughs> when i first started our whole pit crew was guys that just worked in the shop we didn't yeah. have anybody that mm-hmm. you know specialized athletes i mean if we practiced it was just because the cars were done and gone to the <laughs> racetrack so i mean it's we didn't have to wear helmets we didn't have to wear fire suits i mean mm-hmm. we didn't have weight rooms or trainers and, and coaches and all this it's like we just kind of figured it out on our own. Like, hey, we need to practice this stuff to get better. So let's just, you know, just figure it out on our own. Mm-hmm. But now, I mean, everything is, I mean, science out to the 10th degree. I mean, it's, I mean, we're looking at fractions of a second on everything we do. It's like, man, you just, you put your foot in a different spot this time. That's why that stop was slow mm-hmm. before. I mean, you're doing 15, 16 second stops back early on. It was like, man, we're really getting after it. Now it's, 
you know, you practice in the high 11s, low 12s, mm-hmm. I mean, you, you're racing in the, the high 12s, low 13s, and with less people. Yeah. I mean, we had seven guys when we first started. We had Catch Can Man. Now we got five. Two care, now we got five. It's like, and we're still doing it the same amount of speed. Wait till we do four. Wait yeah. till we get to oh, four. Let's not get to that point. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll definitely be a full-time shop guy. <laughs> so, but well, no, it's, wait, it's it, amazing. How do you feel about that? I mean, you obviously embraced it because you, with that shift, you were still very successful. You still won a lot of races. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? I think it, it comes from, you know, just being adaptable. Mm-hmm. You have to, yeah. You have to accept the change that's coming and work to get it better, no matter what that change might be. I mm-hmm. mean, like last year, it was the air gun. You know, a lot of guys struggled with it, but it was like the guys that really performed well with it early were the guys that said, "Hey, this is here. I got to figure this out. This is how I make my living." So you got to school so yourself on the new do. equipment, right? Yeah, and and you have to be disciplined. I mean, you you can't just rely on, you know three or four days a week of practice to do it. You got to put in the extra work on your own, you know, and study film when you're at home sitting mm-hmm. on the couch. I mean, mm-hmm. you could be looking at Instagram or Twitter or whatever, mm-hmm. or you'd be watching film getting better at your craft. Mm. You know, so it's facts. Yeah. Preach. Oh yeah. It's, you got to it, study. It's always something to learn. And, and the you got to learn is, is even watching, watching TV. Mm-hmm. I mean, just watch guys. Like you know? even, even 18 years into my career, I was still learning things from watching some of these younger guys yep, on just, just little things that they were doing and, you know, and then you try to apply those at practice. Yeah. So it's like, you're, you're always constantly learning. And when you think you got it all figured out, guess what? You don't. You know, it's funny you bring that up about the learning and constant learning. It's a perfect segue for our next feature called yeah. the getting schooled, getting schooled presented by the Goddard school, the best childhood preparation for social and academic success Visit GoddardSchool.com for more information. The Goddard School, learning for fun, learning for life. And not only are they learning for fun, learning for life, I'm a big advocate of Goddard School. I mean, I've partnered with them for 10 years with all my kids have been there. No kidding. I mean, I have a four, eight, nine, uh, 11-year-old. Well, to you the still point got where, plenty more time to be at the Goddard School. Then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All of them are at the Goddard School. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we're going to create this section, get in school by the Goddard School, yeah. to show our new listeners what the pit stop times mean and what is yeah. that, you know, how does that translate into an effective pit stop or yes, yeah. being fired or hired? Yeah. That's the biggest thing. I just want to point out some times to you. And um, let me read off Atlanta to mm-hmm. you. The number 22, yeah. you know, a team Penske car, Joey Logano, his pit stop times, his first stop in Atlanta was 20.75, 19.96, 14.3, 14.5. And 14 flat. Yeah. When you first hear those numbers, what do you initially think? I was like, oh, somebody's getting fired. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the Atlanta race, Some, right? Somebody's going to have a bad day on Monday. So, these are the times that are posted on the website, right. on NASCAR. Yep. Now, with those times being posted, you have to take into account that they stop their clock differently from where the team stops. So these exactly. times might be over-embellished somewhat to the point where yeah. when I see a 14-3, a 15-5, I'm thinking of a 13-6 or a... 14-4. Would that yeah, that's be a fair assessment? Realistic. Yeah, when, you, when you're looking at, from our point of view, from our overhead cameras and the cameras that our tire changers wear, you know, that's, that's way more realistic. Exactly. That's maybe way more realistic. Now let's talk about when you're practicing and doing pit stop times. What do those times similar uh, uh, resemble? Uh, they're usually, I mean, you can be anywhere in the low, mid, 12-second range pretty consistently. Okay. Um, just depending on what you're practicing that day. I mean, it's... Uh, a lot of teams like to practice different scenarios depending mm-hmm. on the racetrack you're going to. Okay. You know, adjustments you may do or, you know, some racetracks don't require you to put four tires on a car. So I mean, you might practice a lot of two tires. So it, it all just depends on what you're working on that week. But we're, we're always pushing to get faster. I say that to say, so when you're, when you're practicing at, at the race shop mm-hmm. and you're doing 13 and 14 second pit stops, in your mind you're thinking, okay, we need to pick it up. Exactly. We're yeah. not doing well. Yep. But when you're practicing at the race shop and you're doing 11s and 12s consistently, yeah. you know that's where you need to be because at yeah. the racetrack, you know that time is going to be really when you're taking consideration adrenaline pumping up and yeah. uh, erring on the side of caution, that time is going to be around a 13-2, 13-5. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to probably add almost a second to that time at the racetrack. It's usually kind of what you typically see. But now, I mean, all these athletes were mm-hmm. getting so good and so disciplined yeah. that, you know, 
where you practice is pretty much where you play at the racetrack. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot of time difference there. But I don't know. I don't know because when I talk to all these crew members, hey, what what times are y'all practicing? Oh, I just we're doing eleven fives consistently. Yeah, you know, you know we had a those, ten five. You know how some of those crew members are. You know we can embellish sometimes. Too. They're all they tire just, changers. They just embellish it the other way. We just know? can't talk to these tire changers, man. No, yeah. We lie like crazy. <laughs> can't tell everybody what you're doing. You know, I mean, oh man, you, know, you got to keep people guessing all the time. You know, like, I want to get back. They're, to doing, they're doing ten nines at the shop, man. We got to pick up like a second and a half. Let me show you some more. Let me read off some more. So in Atlanta, I want to I bring up Atlanta because that was our first true test on what the pit stops were going to look like. Being at Daytona, you really you don't take pit stops seriously. I think they did yeah. this year because it's five man. You can't go to any racetrack not taking a pit stop yeah. serious. But you know when we were oh, six yeah. man and seven man, we looked at Daytona as easy money. Oh yeah, it kind of was like to me. It was like oh, this is kind of a day off at yep. the racetrack because the draft and everything. You mm-hmm. never you never really knew what you were going to do. I mean, you could gain eight spots on pit road. But you lose ten just exactly. by getting in the wrong line on the racetrack. So it was like more of those places were more of just get the wheels tight, get mm-hmm. the car full of fuel, get your adjustments done, and then just let the let the drivers and the spotters kind of play it out. That's why I said Atlanta, you know, is pretty much the real tune up, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. for the pit crew members. And if you just compare, uh, I'm focusing on the number twenty two car because number twenty two in my mind is the most consistent and the best pit crew. Not to mention oh, yeah. the defending champions exactly. of the yep. series. So I, I, I'm not picking on them. I'm just focusing on them as yep. well because uh, in Atlanta, Brad Keselowski won the race, yep. and his pit stops were fourteen five, fourteen seven, thirty one point two. 15-5, and 14-7. And um, when I look at those, I see the 31 that jumps out to me, 31 second. Yeah. Obviously, something happened, and that stop yeah. is the one where they had the jack malfunction and get stuck. So, I mean, Correct. that's mm-hmm. what you take in consideration. But when you see those numbers just on paper, all you see is 31 seconds. Right. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, and all the other teams don't know. I mean, because, you know, we don't like to release a lot of information on what's going on. Um, but, mm-hmm. you know, eventually it gets out. Eventually. But, you know, yeah, the other teams look at it, well, they threw up a 31-second stop. So, I mean, they're human, too. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. and things happen, especially yeah. with, um, and I, I definitely want to get into that with the qualifying and the pit stall selection. It's with the five-man pit stop and and just with the changes in qualifying and where you're picking your pit stalls, you, oh, yeah. you don't have the luxury anymore of going to the, uh, the track knowing that, oh, yeah, we're going to get a top five uh, starting spot and yeah. have a good pit stall selection. Oh, yeah. is There's a, more of a randomness added to yeah. the qualifying effort, and I want to get more into that and uh, get your thoughts on how you feel about that and where the sport yeah. is going, as well as talk about, you know, our, don't forget about our clutch performers, you know, as oh, well. Yeah. We want to highlight those yep. guys. And so much to talk to you about. We're going to be right back with Kyle Power, uh, Kyle Power yeah. <laughs> in a minute. Y'all stick in and hang back and sit tight, and we'll be back in a minute. Clutch Coffee Bar in Mooresville, North Carolina, is redefining the drive through coffee game in Race City, USA. The Clutch experience is quick, efficient, and personal. Unmatched customer service is the name of the game. Clutch Coffee Bar offers signature espresso drinks, classic coffees, custom-flavored infused energy drinks, smoothies, and more. With over 25 flavors, there's something for everyone. Visit our two locations in Mooresville, 356 Williamson Road and 154 West Plaza Drive. Open daily, 5 a.m. till 9 p.m. Power up today with Clutch Coffee Bar. Check out MRN.com for a new podcast series called The Tough Trucks of NASCAR. 25 years and still trucking. We'll take you back to some great races. Benson to the bottom of the racetrack. This is the race for the lead and the win at Michigan. And some wild moments. One truck is in the air. Matt Crafton upside down. And we'll let you hear the stories behind them. He was too bullheaded to let me pass him, and I was too bullheaded to let him have it. Download the show for free on iTunes and at MRN.com. At the Goddard School, teachers customize lessons so children can explore their interests, have fun, and learn the skills they need for success in school and beyond. From infant sign language to pre-K students tackling STEAM learning, our Flex Learning Program or Fun Learning Experience is grounded in research that shows the most genuine learning occurs when children are having fun. Our teachers leverage this through lessons inspired by children's imaginations. To enroll, visit GoddardSchool.com. The Goddard School, learning for fun, learning for life. They see me rolling, they hating, patrolling and trying to catch me riding dirty, trying to catch me riding dirty, trying to catch me riding dirty, trying to catch me riding And we're back, I'm riding dirty with Kyle Power. Kyle Power. Yeah. You rode dirtier. You, 
Nutmeg. Yeah, you've been driving dirty a few times. Yeah. If we were in Vegas, I could tell you because whatever happens there stays there. Your registration but, has been expired one time and you drove, hasn't it? I think it's expired right now, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> God. So hopefully there's no police officers cruising the parking lot right now. I'm going to be trouble. I have a ticket when I get out of here. You got to back into your parking yeah, spot. I yeah, that's I do how you got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know you got those yeah. trollers looking at oh, you. Yeah, oh, somebody, yeah. yeah. When are you going to pay your registration? Yeah, eventually. <laughs> anyway, Kyle, we're back. Las Vegas. Uh, I usually don't pay attention to qualifying because, you know, like I say, all I want to know is what pit stall we're in. Yeah. And uh, when you're working with a top tier race team, you can pretty much uh, bet that you're going to have a good starting spot. Right. If you qualify well, you'll get either an opening in and out or the number one pit box. Yeah. And um, but with qualifying being the way it is now with the new aero packaging, I guess um, taking the control out of the driver's hands, you know, and yeah. what I mean by that to all my new listeners is prior uh, when they qualified, the cars would go out one at a time or in packs, and you could basically just run a fast lap, and that would determine where you would start. Now that you have this new package and um, and these changes to these cars, you can't just run a fast lap. You need help. Yeah, you need the help of a uh, someone to draft with yeah. or to follow behind, and then they get into the game of waiting and seeing who goes first. And it, it was it, it yeah. was interesting to watch that this week. Yeah, that, that final round was a little crazy. That's it was. probably one of the craziest qualifying <laughs> sessions I've seen in the Cup Series. I was like, wow, man, that's, that's interesting. But the reason why I was looking, because it happened in Atlanta where the 22 car, I'm going back yeah. to the champs, the defending champs, yeah. they qualified poorly, and yeah. they got stuck in between two cars they were running against, yeah. and it just ruins your day. Uh, not only ruins your day, I mean, it, it might not ruin your day, but it makes that butt tight. Yeah. As a crew member, especially if you're in the rear of the car. Oh, yeah. It Why just, so? It makes everything difficult. Well, now, when, especially in the rear, you know, as you're coming around another car, well, now the rear of the car is probably six or eight feet farther from the wall. So that just slows you down even more. Because you have to come you know, around a car around, to get. Yeah. And, and do we know how, imagine how hard is that to come down pit road and try to parallel park in between two cars yeah. frontwards, not reversing. Oh, yeah. At, 45, 50 miles an hour. So, and you're trying not to run over any other crew members. As you know, you're jumping out in front of the car. Some drivers might not care about that. But we most, won't mention any names. Most but drivers are pretty good about not trying to hit crew members. Most aren't. Are, are. So, most are. Because they're just worried about damaging their car, really. But, but there are a but couple no, of names. When I knew that we were pitted by them, I would say a silent prayer. Yeah, there was there were certain guys you're like, oh, this is going to be a long day. But, <laughs> but no, it's just it's just difficult when you're coming around cars and having to leave around cars. You just lose so much time. I you mean, do. And in, in our world, we're talking, you know, half, three quarters of a second or a second, you know. But in most people's worlds, that's not a lot of time. But what we live in, it's, it's an eternity. Well, so. I'm staying on a uh, Team Penske band, bandwagon because the fastest time recorded by NASCAR's time yeah. was by the two car yeah. this past week. And it was a 13-2. Oh, yeah. Yeah. By the two car. Yeah, I'm thinking that was, uh, looking at our numbers, it was definitely in the 12s. 12s. So, yeah, that's that's flying nowadays with five minutes. You stop. think they'll be able to do that consistently? Or is I, that just uh, one, in, you know, no, like every I mean, five or so stops, you might get yeah, a 12? You're, you're going to get that. I mean, as as everyone gets more comfortable with this and the, and the groups work together longer, I think you can see it be pretty consistently in the, the mid-high 12s and low 13s. You and know, you say that. that. Explain your role now as it relates to going over the wall and working with the younger tire changers or the, the, more, uh, the less experienced tire changers. What's your role yeah. now, and how do you develop that? Uh, well, my role in the shop or in pit stops right now is, you know, I'm kind of kind of like a backup. Mm -hmm. um, I practice and work out with the teams during the week. I mean, whether I change fronts or rears, you know, just kind of be there in case somebody gets hurt or mm -hmm. ill, gets sick, or, you know, has a family emergency or something like that. They have a guy that, we can just plug into that role, and I know I'm only there temporarily, mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't. It allows the team to operate as normal. Exactly, and uh, it's not putting any extra reps on some other guys in practice to where you know, because you know, being healthy at the end of the year is such a big deal. So there's a possibility that you know, eight nine races in, you'll be utilized a lot. Yeah, de definite possibility. I mean, if someone gets banged up during a race or something. I mean, I could go in for one race or I could go in for six or eight races or the rest of the season. You don't know. So and there's no to... learning curve with you. I hope not. <laughs> you know, but, but there's still a learning curve. I mean, you know, the, the change in fronts is a little different. Really? You know, yeah, I've changed. Uh, I changed fronts for about three months in my early in my career. 
and then I switched the rear and been on the rear ever since. So, so basically, you are a rear changer, and now in your new role, you are just a changer. Yes. For wherever yep. team that Penske has, whatever yep. position as a changer, front or rear. Exactly. Yeah. So one day, like we had a guy that he hurt his foot in practice, and they drug me out and be like, "All right, you're changing rears for the rest of practice." All right, no problem. And on some days it's like, hey, you're going to go on the front today. Okay, no problem. You know, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, that's what's so up. So you, you, you accept the role and you, you learn. This. It's kind of neat because I get to learn something new every day. Mm, you know, and I'm sure a lot of tire changers, when they have an issue or they have a question about something, it's good to have you there that they can lean on, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and some of our younger guys, you know, they ask a lot of questions because, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, they see me out there practicing and, you know, they're like, hey, how do you do this? Or how do you approach this? Or, you know, what do you do when this happens? Or or just even, you know, crew chiefs might come and ask me, be like, hey, can you help this guy a little bit with some crash repair stuff? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, certain racetracks like a homestead last year, you know, we run up by the wall all the time. Well, some of these younger guys, they've never seen a car when it comes in with the right side. Exactly. With no paint left on it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, this is, you kind of got to go about how to explain that to them and, and how to fix it and do it quickly. Mm. Well. They're learning from a great guy, you know, well, with a lot of knowledge. That, yeah. And last year, you were our clutch performer a couple of times. and I didn't even know that. I know. I mean, you, there was no trouble. I didn't even get a free clutch coffee or anything. I mean, Are you really like going to embarrass me on, 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 like that? I might, yeah. You're right. And you're trying I, to say. I know you can take it. Though, you're trying so. to say you didn't get. Uh, I didn't it, get a gift card. Or look, look. I mean, I like coffee like that. Kyle, we were cool. But um, yeah. you just lost I some know. cool points right, right there because no. I know for sure <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't give you clutch coffee, yeah. we got a problem here. Yeah. But we will fix that at the end well, of this, this show. Yeah, we're gonna have <laughs> Speaking of which, it brings us to our clutch performers to watch in 2019. Our next five this week are Nick O'Dell, Will Johnson, Josh Appleby, Braxton Brennan, and Steve Price. You know anybody on this list? Uh, yeah, I know a few of them guys. Who do you know? What do you know I about mean, Nick O'Dell? He's solid. I mean, always has been. Probably always will be. Don't get too I mean, personal. He's emotional. He's just a little sensitive. He, he is, but okay. you know, a lot of those front tire changers are. <laughs> Us rear guys, you know, we're just kind of in the trenches getting it done. The front guys, you know, it's different. What about guys. Will Johnson? Number, I, I've number seen one. Will around, yeah. Number, he's a freshman. He's a rookie. No this is kidding. his first year starting on the uh, number one car with no Kurt Busch, a new team. And Ooh. you know what it made him excel? The rear carrier, I mean, the two tire uh, carrier yeah. bringing out two tires. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really good at that. And um, strong guys. That's I mean, a great addition yeah. at Chip Ganassi. And then you have Josh Appleby. What you know about him? I don't. I he's don't another think younger I've ever guy. Met Josh. He's another yeah. younger guy, and um, he's jacking on the one car. Very strong that's team good. with Chip Ganassi has yeah. over there, and a uh, very good athlete as well. And then you yeah. have Braxton Brown. I know you know Braxton. Oh, oh yeah, I know Braxton. Yeah, you he's, know, Jack Man for the number two, yeah, and Brad Keselowski. He, he just gets it done, man. He's he's an intense individual. You know, he's he's a clutch player all day long. All I mean, day he, long. He lives for it. I mean, you can throw out any challenge to him, and he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna try to beat you. What about Steve Price? Finally, oh yeah, Steve. Yeah, he's he's a boy, character, right? He's he's unique. You know, let's go with that. He's unique. <laughs> Love the guy though, man. He's always smiling, always happy. You know. He's got, I mean, nasty fast hands. Mm, that's and, great. Yeah. Like I said, that's our clutch performers to watch. Within the next few uh, races or so, we will be coming out. I think we have three races left. I think race six. This is, what race is this? This is race number three, three coming yep. up. Yeah. At race six, we'll have enough information to uh, present our rankings list per position. Oh, cool. Top yeah. 10 um, each position. So we're just... Uh, we're so excited to be working on that and so yeah. excited to be able to present that here yeah, in the, the next the guys will love that in the upcoming weeks. I mean, you you know? always kind of want to know where you stand, especially in your, uh, you know, in within your peers. OK. You, know, you always want to kind of know it's like, you know, I feel like I'm the man, yep. but it's like, where do I kind of stack up? Where, where does everyone else think I am? Well, they just got to check their uh, money line cash card because the there more you money go. you have in there. Shows yeah. how good you are. Yeah, exactly. Or at least somebody <laughs> thinks you're really good. Because if you look good, play good, yeah. you get paid good. Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> you got to keep doing it. That's you got you you know? to keep doing you that. Keep getting them cash cards. Huh? <laughs> Stick around. We'll be right back. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strengths. 
Did you know that banks collected over 15 billion in unnecessary bank fees last year? Come on, enough is enough. It's time we took back control of our finances. That's why Moneyline is proud to bring you the financial crew chief and to be a NASCAR sponsor. Look, no one knows more about hard work and pursuing their dreams than NASCAR fans, drivers, and teams. So we want to bring you the kind of banking that the big banks would never build, with features like zero fee checking and zero fee investment accounts. And because life is also meant for a join, with Money Lion, NASCAR fans get even more. We're giving away 1,500 NASCAR tickets to our members this year. Plus, you can get 5% cash back on NASCAR tickets at track purchases and all purchases at NASCAR.com. Learn more at MoneyLion.com or download our app. This is America's most powerful financial membership. Money Lion, here we roar. Yes, and we're back. Rocco Williams here on MRN Crew Call, presented by Money Lion. I'm here with Kyle Power. I got the power. I like how you say that. Huh? I got. The, and I, hey, I gotta admit, I thought I was gonna get on Daryl about his playlist. He, he's been doing yeah. pretty good. Good job, Daryl, on, on, on the music you have right here. And I want to jump right into our our Money Lion Financial Crew Chief yeah. segment of the show. And I want to talk to you about life after racing and our life during racing. It's, it's yeah. never after racing it's but it's never after racing no i mean it's still in you i mean <laughs> even though like i haven't been traveling to the racetrack a lot on the weekends now mm-hmm. but i still know what's going on it frees you, know? you up yeah you get, get some little extra time to do some things on your own but you know you still listen to the mrn broadcast mm-hmm. you know while you're out working somewhere or got it on in the car while you're driving down the road you just you kind of got to you got to keep on to Tune what's going on in the world. I call this the financial, uh, this is called the financial crew chief uh, segment brought to you by Moneyline yeah. for the simple fact that, you know, I, I wanted to talk to you about how you're making some side change here. And oh, I can't tell you that. You're actually doing, I've been yeah. looking at your work on the gram. It's yeah. looking pretty good. You're making yeah. furniture, producing furniture. Yeah. Or, am yeah. I saying that right? You tell me what you're doing. I kind of build, you know, okay. builder, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I started off just, you know, as a hobby, just mm-hmm. kind of building some furniture on the side, you know, tables, bath vanities, you know, TV consoles, stuff like that. It was just a kind of a way to get away from the hectic life of racing. And, uh, you know, more and more people kind of caught on. I was putting some pictures on Instagram. Yeah, I remember. You know, I, I think I remember your first post. You, yeah, probably, I was yeah. like, I, was like, like I sent you a message. Like, I was like, did you build that? Yeah. So is there a certain piece that you specialize in or a certain type of or it could be like, hey, I want this built. They present the idea and you run with it or what? How does kinda that go? I just present the idea or, okay. you know, people be like, hey, I've kind of got this idea. What do you think? And I'll do some research and look and be like, well, how about this? You know, it's kind of just different point of view. Okay. But, you know, yeah, it's just uh, nothing. Don't really specialize in anything. I'm actually uh, doing some work with a general contractor on the side, you know. Okay. Uh, trimming out some uh, higher end homes in Davidson, Harrisburg area, yeah. stuff like that. So, so I, what was I the last that. three projects you did that you were extremely proud of? Oh, that's it. Well, I did uh, actually one of our strength coaches at work. I did, mm-hmm. uh, I, I helped a guy with a bathroom remodel and that. I built the bath vanity for him. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he really liked that, really enjoyed it. His wife loved it. So <laughs> it's like perfect. That's you all know, that matters. Glad I could help, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, but pretty much anything, you know, mm-hmm. you take a lot of pride in everything you do. I mean, there's there's some projects you're like, man, I, I hate to sell this, you know. It's yeah. Kind of nice, like to keep it for myself. But you have you like can't. a bond to it, I guess. Yeah. You know, you put enough time into it, you know. And I have some pieces at home that I've kept that I really mm-hmm. like, you know, that I probably won't get rid of. Some of the the early versions of stuff that I built. Any yeah. uh goals long term with pursuing this and rates, nor or. Oh uh, yeah, possibly. I'd, I'd like to, you know. I mean, I'm gonna have a big. Uh, but racing, it's. I mean, it's been my life for so long. It's. It's hard to just kind of step away from it altogether. I don't. I don't think I could ever do that. It's just kind of. It's in my blood, and mm-hmm. you know. But you know, if I could do this on the side, you know, and and you know, make some people happy and do some nice things for them, you know, that'd be good. It's funny that you say that because uh, our our guest last week, Chad Averett, when he found out you were coming on, he made yeah. sure he requested. He said um, he needs a table piece. For his dining room and don't right. and yeah. don't hurt him on the price. Well, oh, well I know where he works <laughs> and uh, he's kind of still in the game full time. So yeah, uh, you know I won't hurt him too bad. You know, uh, real real quick, any thoughts of the upcoming race in Phoenix? I think it's gonna be exciting. Yeah, yeah, you know, I agree. I mean, it's gonna be really exciting. I mean, it's gonna be interesting to see this package on a short track. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I mean, you keep the field bunched up like that on a short track. I mean, any 
tempers are going to start flaring yeah. as the race progresses. And, and if, you know, if you can't pass somebody, you're going to move them. Man, so. it, I, I agree with you 100%. I, I can't wait to see. And uh, my biggest thing, I'm going to watch them qualifying. I'm going to see oh, where yeah. they get those pit stalls at because it's going to make some people's lives really difficult oh, yeah. out there in Phoenix. Those stalls are wide, but it's deceptively, yeah. it, it, it tricks you, you know, uh, visually because they look wide, but Bro, they're, oh, yeah. it's really tight on it's, pit road, yeah. right? I think about everywhere we go is pretty tight now. I mean, just the way the competition is. And, I mean, now with this new package, it mm-hmm. seems like there's a lot more cars on pit road mm-hmm. during the stage breaks because, mm-hmm. you know, there's more cars stay on the lead lap. So I like that, it. That kind of mixes things up a little bit. We saw that in Atlanta. You know, usually at Atlanta, one the leader gets out and puts a bunch of guys lap down. And I think at the first stage break, there was like 28 or 30 cars still on the lead lap. <laughs> like, Ooh, this is going to be tight. <laughs> well, there you have it. I mean, Kyle, we appreciate you coming on the show today. Good luck for y'all in Phoenix, Thank and you. congratulations for all the success you had with your yeah, team and Team that. Penske. Y'all are rolling right now. Oh, yeah. We're going to try to keep it rolling. Those Fords are rolling, man. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, MRN Crew Call brought to you by Moneyline and the Goddard School.